going to sing the song. I want to just believe that your God is awesome. And these are not just words that he is awesome. That he heals those who are broken out. He is the restorer of lives, the repairer of broken worlds. He keeps us in the valley to hide us from the rain. Hallelujah. on greater fulfillment. May I have a word from the Lord for you that this will be your year of greater fulfillment. Amen. It will be your year of greater fulfillment of purpose, Amen. greater fulfillment in your career, Amen. greater fulfillment in your family, Amen. in your profession, Amen. in your business. Amen. In everything you do, you will find greater fulfillment. Amen. That you've done things that you're not necessarily you're not excited about. I'm telling you the truth. This year, you're going to find joy in the work of your hands. Amen. You're going to find the joy in the things you do. Amen. You will do things that will bring gladness to you Amen. and bring gladness to your family. Amen. And then God's name will be praised forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just want to I just want to encourage us. I'm going to charge us. I just want to show us some scriptures. And so that we just talk about them. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to start with some of the scriptures we read before. Amen. Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 to 14. Amen. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. 
the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. He had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Verse 13, the man began to prosper. And he continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. The man began to prosper. He continued to prosper. He continued, he continued, he continued until he became very, very prosperous. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amplified Bible says, and the man 13, and 13, and the man Isaac became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and extremely distinguished. Extremely. 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 The man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. The plan of God for your life this year and beyond is that you will experience greater dimensions of increase, greater dimensions of fulfillment, greater dimensions of every good thing in your life. Amen. That your story would not be that he started prospering and then failed. Your story would not be, you know, I remember that that guy was very wealthy. Your story would not be that, oh, you know, when I was younger, about 10 years ago, things were very, very nice for me, and everything was so fantastic, but now. Listen to this. If that has been your story until this year, God is about to change your story around. Amen. That you will never think of a better yesterday. Amen. You will never speak of a better last year. Amen. That God will change your story such that your years become progressive. Amen. Your, 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 your joy becomes progressive. Amen. You talk about enlargement, you talk about increase, you talk about better things in your career, you're moving to greater dimensions, not backward. In the fulfillment of your purpose, you're moving forward, not backward. How many people are ready this year to speak about new song of increase in their career? Amen. Anybody here? I'm telling you the truth. If you are interested, I guarantee you God is more interested. That you're going to sing a new song in your career, in your family, in your finances, in your health. That your story will not be, you know, it was very, very nice before, but now everything is collapsing. Your story will not be like that. For the Lord your God will cause there to be increase in your life. The Lord will cause there to be growth in your life. The Lord will cause there to be increase, growth, expansion, enlargement in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're still going to have enlargement. Amen. Amen. You're still going to have increase. Amen. The man began to prosper and he prospered and continued prospering. Continue until he became very prosperous. God has a clear agenda for your life. And the agenda of God for your life is that you live your life to the fullest. God wants you to have greater fulfillment in life than you have ever experienced before. God's agenda is clear. God wants you to have a full life. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes to comes only to steal and kill. I'm reading an NIV. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. I have come that they might have life and have abundant life. Listen to this. You, what is most important in your life is what God is saying concerning you. 
The most important thing in your life is what God is saying concerning you. What God has said concerning you. The promises of God. The words of God concerning you. There is nothing you're going to go through in life uh, that can bring down the word of God concerning you. The most important thing about your life is what God has said. And I, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know how bad and you're singing all things. I've been so terrible. Things have been awkward. Listen to this. God has a word concerning you. And it's a clear word. It's not confused. It's clear. It's, it's purposeful. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I want to tell you this year that the work of the enemy will fail in your life. Amen. I want to tell you the agenda of the devil will not come to pass in your life. Amen. He comes only to steal, but he will not steal from you. Amen. He comes to kill, but I tell you the truth, he can kill you. Amen. He can kill your experiences, he can kill your career. He comes to destroy, he cannot destroy your life. Amen. Because Jesus said, I have come. So that they might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus said, my purpose is to reverse the work of the enemy. My purpose is to do the opposite of what he wants to do. My work is to bring restoration. Is to bring repair. My work is to do exactly something that is opposite to what the devil wants to do. What God is saying is the devil has his plan, but I have a superior plan. The devil has an agenda, but I have an everlasting agenda. And it doesn't matter what the devil wants to do, I will do something to turn him around. I will do something to change your story. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Greater fulfillment is for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not supposed to just survive. We're not just supposed to barely survive. We don't live our life to pay bills. We don't live our life just to have food in our mouth. Life is more than that. We're not just living to just say, oh, we're still alive. You know, somebody says, oh, you didn't say, well, thank God we're still breathing. No, we're not living just to breathe. No, no. That's not what it works. He said you would have life. But it's not going to stop in having life. You're going to have abundant life. You're going to have life to the full. Your life will have a meaning. Your life will bring reward. Your life will cause excitement. Your life will bring peace and joy and celebration and laughter. That's what he's saying. Not just some kind of boring life just to be alive. No. That's not the will of God for you. Anybody can just be alive and be alive. But you just want to be alive and breathing. No, you want to be alive doing the will of God. You want to be alive fulfilling your purpose. You want to be alive making God happy. You want to be alive being a blessing to other people. Amen. Wow. You want to be alive being a blessing to other people. You see, you cannot be a blessing until your life is so full. Because sometimes you need to give out of the abundance of what you have. Sometimes, you see, you don't give what you don't have. You know, maybe on Christmas time, you know, some of us are even open. Oh, if I could have so much money, I would have bought gift for my husband or for my wife. But you didn't have no money to buy. And that's why you did not. Your story is changing. Amen. You see, my plan is this. And I, I have an agreement with God. Let it not be that you want to do something. And the reason you didn't do it is because there is no money. Let it be that you begin to make choices by the leader of the Holy Spirit. You know one thing I've thought about? Money, money leads people more than the Holy Spirit. And you've got to change that this year. That the Holy Spirit leads you, not your pocket. The Holy Spirit leads you, not the devil. The Holy Spirit leads, leads you, not the economy. Not conservative or Republican or whatever, whatever, whatever. It is that as America. No. Here, not the Tory or the Labour. No, not, none of them. You understand? You are led by the Spirit of God. And that's why you have to connect to the will of God for your life. You have to connect to what God wants to do in your life. You have to bring yourself in alignment with the Word of God. I have come that you will have life and have it abundantly, more abundantly. So we're not barely, we're not supposed to just survive enough of mediocrity. Enough of just getting by, just doing it. You know, every small thing is enough. You, you know, it's all right like that. No, 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 no. It's not all right until it is the will of God. It's not okay until it is the plan of God for your life. It's not okay until that is what God has prepared for you. Somebody shout yes. Yes. God wants us to have a full and abundant life. 
abundant life. I, I want to let it get into your spirit. Abundant life. That's the plan of Jesus. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. I have come that they may have abundant life. That's what God wants for you. You will do greater things this year than you have ever done before. Amen. Because as you move into the fullness of the life of God, you will find things happening in your life without stress. Amen. As you move into the fullness of the life of God, things begin to happen for you without you even struggling. Things begin to happen for you. Things begin to open up for you. Opportunities begin to open up for you. Situations begin to change as you connect yourself to the word of God. But you get to believe this word. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told of the Lord, if only she believes. Jesus said, he, he that believes in me, these things that I do, they will do, but greater things they will do. But he said, if they believe. And I want to challenge you to believe God. That is not a son of man that he should lie or repent of the things that he has said. I want to challenge you to believe God. If he says it, he means it. God doesn't just want to deceive you. He's not trying to be impressive. He doesn't want you to feel like he's a good God. He's already a good God no matter what you feel. So it's not trying. He say, listen to this. Sometimes we think God wants us to feel good. No, 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 no. It's the truth. It should make you feel good. But it's the truth. It's not telling you so that I guess you're all excited and hysterical and then after that you go back. No, 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 no. The word of God is true. And everything he's telling you is true. Jesus said, if it were not so, I would not have told you. In other words, I don't tell lies. This is not tales by moonlight. This is the truth. Whatever I say, I mean it. Whatever I declare, I want to do it. If I say I have come to give you life abundantly, that's exactly the truth. That's what's going to happen. That's why I've come. I don't have any ulterior motives. Whatever I am is what I'm telling you. I have come that you may have life. And I want to challenge somebody today. And tell yourself, you know what, although you're struggling with everything and just, you know, and just speaking negative and complaining negatively and saying, you know, we're just going to, no, no, no. Let it stop. That's not the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. I will do great things. You will have greater fulfillment this year. Amen. You will have greater fulfillment beyond this year. Amen. That your life will produce great result, greater result, greater testimonies Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You will see things happen to you that you have never seen before. Because Jesus' agenda is to give you life and to give you abundant life. Amen. Greater fulfillment. Greater fulfillment. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. By the grace of God I am what I am. You have grace for greater fulfillment. You are empowered by God to do things that are beyond your capacity. You, are, you have grace. You are graced for greater things. You can fulfill more in life. Not by your power, not by your mind, but by the spirit of the Lord. If it's by your power, then you can fail. If it's by your strength, you can blow it off. But if it's by the grace of God, nothing can stop you. I'm telling you, nothing can stop you. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly. Everybody say, I labor more abundantly. He said, I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but by the grace of God, which was with me. I labor more than everybody. I labor more abundantly because of the grace of God upon my life. I labor more abundantly because of the grace of God upon my life. But the grace, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Let's take it one by one. If you're looking and you're believing God for greater fulfillment in life, I want to ask you this question. Is the grace of God upon your life in vain? What are you doing about the talent that you have? 
What are you you're doing about the grace of God upon your life? You, you know this. You, you, I'm not going to take this from you. You're not going to tell me, you know what? I don't have any talent. I don't have any gift. I don't. That's not true because he gave everybody severally according to their abilities. Before you were formed in your water's world, he knew you. He called you by your name and he said you are mine. There is no human being without a talent. There is nobody without a gift. Listen to this. If you don't have anything to give, God won't create you. The only reason you are around, the only reason you are living, the only reason you were born is because God has an agenda for your life. There is a space that is your space. Hallelujah. There is a space that is your space. And God created you for the space that is yours. I'm not going to get in your space. You're not going to get in my space because you are the only one with the grace for your space. Oh, come on, somebody receive something right now. Now, you are the only one with the grace for your space. Um, and as long as you're ready to occupy, nobody's going to occupy it for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I prove it to the scripture. You know, he gets some five talent, get gone one guy, two get gone one guy, one. And listen to this. The guy that had one buried it. Uh, the question is, the guy with the five talent, why didn't he go and get it for me and use it? You know why? Because nobody has any right over your talent. Mm -hmm. It's your talent. If you don't use it, it remains buried. I'm not going you see, I've got too many talents that I've not even used. I can't use your talent. Mm -hmm. Is the grace of God on your life in vain? It's a serious question. You're crying, God, you know what? Bless me, bless me. No, 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 no. You are blessed. What are you doing with the blessing of God upon your life? What are you doing with the talents you have? What are you doing with the gift, with the blessing, the grace that God has given to you? What are you doing with it? Because listen to this. Uh, when you begin to take advantage and make use of the grace that you have, you will find greater fulfillment in life. Many people are frustrated in life not because they're not blessed, but because they're not walking in their blessing. Not because they don't have grace, but because they're not flowing in their grace. And that many people are in other people's grace, and you don't find fulfillment in other people's space. You find fulfillment in your 